Welcome back. Last time we introduced the components on board a satellite that make them work. And in this segment, we'll go into more detail on what's arguably the most important component, power, electrical power. Electrical power is needed to run pretty much everything on a satellite. So like when your cell phone runs out of power, it's basically an expensive paperweight. When a satellite doesn't have power, it's a piece of space debris. The source of electrical power for satellites orbiting around the Earth are solar panels. Solar panels convert the sun's energy into electricity. The solar panels on a satellite aren't super different than the ones you use or see on Earth. Solar panels are made from a special material that converts photons, light, coming from the sun and turns it into electrons, electricity. What's most different between operating solar panels on Earth versus in space is the amount of available sunlight. So even on like a super sunny day, Earth's atmosphere blocks a lot of solar radiation. In space, there's more available sunlight, and so a space-based solar panel can generate nearly 10 times more power over the same area. And the larger your solar panels, the more area, the more power you can generate. Satellites are launched with their solar panels folded up and will unfold the panels once in orbit. And in the quest to get the most area once a solar panel is unfolded, satellite designers will sometimes consult with origami experts to optimize their designs. A solar panel will only produce power if the sun is shining directly on it. And if you've ever played with like one of those kids' toys that has a solar cell, you know that as soon as the sunlight is removed, like if the clouds go overhead, a solar panel will stop producing power. And this is true in space as well. If the sun is not shining directly onto a solar panel, there's no electricity av available to run the satellite. And that's not good. So satellites will actively move or orient their solar panels to face the sun throughout their orbit. This requires a way to modify and control the orientation of the satellite. And so satellites sometimes have small thrusters or engines which allow the satellite to orient itself, but these can run out of fuel and aren't a long-term solution. So most satellites have what are called reaction wheels that allow a satellite to control all three dimensions of its motion. These are like gyroscopes and orient the satellite using the same ideas that allow a falling cat to land on its feet. Satellites can orient their solar panels towards the sun, but there's actually a much larger problem for generating solar power. Earth-orbiting satellites are often themselves in the Earth's shadow, where the sun is completely blocked. This is especially true for LEO satellites, which spend half their time in the Earth's shadow. But even satellites out at geostationary orbits will spend some time in the Earth's shadow. And so, for this reason, solar panels are always combined with a rechargeable battery. The electrical power created by the solar panels charges the battery when the sun is visible. And it's the battery that supplies electricity to the rest of the satellite, allowing power to be stored and used where and when that it's needed. The battery needs to both withstand the extreme environment of space, it also needs to be able to charge and discharge many times per day over the several years or more of a lifetime of a satellite. Okay, so satellites rely on solar powers for electricity. And there are rare exceptions for missions that are planned to last only a few days or weeks. These very short missions maybe will launch with a fully charged battery, and this saves the cost and the risk of unfolding solar panels after launch. So for example, the very first artificial satellite, Sputnik, was launched with a battery that lasted three weeks. Although Sputnik continued to orbit for a few months, once it ran out of battery, it was no longer able to transmit its chirping radio signal. Another example of a spacecraft which will not use solar panels are missions heading out beyond Mars. Solar radiation becomes weaker and weaker further from the sun, and current solar panels just don't provide enough power once you get out near Jupiter. Missions to the outer solar system are instead powered by radioactivity. Radioactive materials like plutonium-238 decays and generates heat that can be turned into electricity. And while this sounds fancy, it actually doesn't provide a lot of power, so satellites around Earth and Mars, solar power is definitely the way to go. So now that we have electrical power to run our satellites, we'll turn to the next most critical system, communication. In the next segment, we'll discuss how satellites communicate with Earth.